There's nothing out there. It's in here. Let's look in here. Stop looking out there. There is no gadget out there. <laughs> it's you. Exploring the human journey. My name is Dr. Erica Middlemas. I'm a retired naturopathic physician and level three QHHT practitioner. My work solely focuses on helping people heal and getting in touch with their intuition and understanding how incredibly powerful they are. And I use this method called QHHT to help people understand deep within themselves who they are. They do this by getting in touch with their higher self through this technique. What I really do is help people understand that they have this power within them to get their own answers every second of every single day. And when we understand that all we need is ourselves, that we are our own healers, we don't need anything outside. My goal as a practitioner, as a guide, is to help people understand you've got this. You don't need anything outside. You've got it all in here. And I'm going to show you how to get to it. I'm gonna show you how to realize it within yourself so that you can live the most incredible life. Live the life that you came here to live. And have a fun, incredible life and be happy and joyful. Hi and welcome, I'm so glad you joined us today. Dr. Erica Middlemiss is with me. And this is the fun part about this story. It was literally a year ago, we met each other and we started filming for the new project, Journeys Into the Soul. It's a docu-series about people that do quantum healing hypnosis, life between lives, hypnotherapy, and all of the answers are within. It's a show about discovering that. So I met Dr. Erica and we became fast friends. And I said, hey, we need to do an episode of Exploring the Human Journey so I can show everybody all your awesomeness rather than just a nice little curated couple minutes of who I am and what I do. And I thought, let's hang out. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. So first of all, you are the first person to ever say, yeah, okay, crazy guy, you've got an idea. Can you show me what's going to be like? No, you're the first one. <laughs> so, yeah. And the benefit was uh, I did a Zoom session with Julia Cannon and she says, oh, you've got to have Erica be part of this. She's a QHHD level three practitioner and she's in your area. I'm like, whoa, Scottsdale, that's you know, right next to where I am. Nice. So um, we filmed an episode. It was great. You had a client named Becky. She had this incredible experience. She had healing uh, physically. She had internal revelations. And um, I saw how you navigated skillfully through this, through someone that can have these different experiences. So um, give the viewer a little bit of presence about the work that you do with QHHT, just to, so people are like, well, it's QHHT. Sure. So give a little bit of that. Well, QHHT is a technique developed by Dolores Cannon, and it stands for Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Just as I say that, I saw a little hummingbird come and say hello to us out the window. So <laughs> it's I, a sign. The minute I said Dolores Cannon, so that oh, was that so was good. really cool. So hello, yeah. right? Was it a red bird? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> scripting, see a was, red bird. It was a hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, all the, all the little birdie messengers. But QHHT is a method of hypnosis that is designed to help people get their own answers, to be able to understand their connection with their higher self to hear that communication, to make those discernments within your mind, because it's all that's happening in the mind. And to also understand how powerful your mind is, that, that you have these memories of your soul. Your entire continuum is, is in here, deeply somewhere in there. And we have access to it. And oftentimes in our life, there are things that we don't understand. And maybe we've carried something in from other lifetimes, or maybe it's something that we don't understand about this current life. And this method allows us to get those answers, to really just get in touch with the lesson, the understanding, and gain a new perspective. Because it's really all about gaining the new perspective. Yeah. 
it gives mind you a, is everything. A, a new way to look at something. And then yes. when you have an experience yourself and you're like, oh, and then mm -hmm. you see that the why, you see the reason it happened. Yes. It's so powerful. It's, it's even yeah. more powerful than you going, oh, here, here's the answer. Let me tell you. Way more powerful because I don't think that there's any power in that, actually. You know, when someone goes to a counselor and the counselor says, hey, this is the, the reason you're this way or let's put you in, in this little box and, and that person who did this to you, we'll put them in that little box and we'll, and we'll blame this and that and the other thing and, and all these boxes and explanations. And at the end of the day, no. It's just that narrative of someone getting their own answers is so much more powerful. It's the experience. You know, yeah. I say all the time, ayahuasca and hypnotherapy right. are the two things that saved my soul from the narrative I was given. You get one lifetime and there's some sort of a judgment and you're either going to go to the good place or the bad place. And I lived yeah. in that. When I got a hold of Journey of Souls, Dr. Michael Newton's work, and he was uh, one of the two, for me, the two pioneers was Newton and Cannon. He was the first pioneer I ran into, and he mm -hmm. said, you're a spiritual being having a human experience. And he had 7,000 case studies he'd put in this book. And he said, all you are here to do is to grow, experience, explore, expand. It's, mm -hmm. there's, that's it. You're that's here it. to have your experience. Yep. And I went, oh, it took the pressure off of me. Mm -hmm. And then sometime later, I got into the work of Dolores Cannon and, and uh, reading the material, watching the videos, and then meeting practitioners like yourself. and. Mm -hmm. That that is so powerful. When I've had my own sessions yeah. and I've seen things come up, and I went, "Oh, mm -hmm. I see why this is here now." Yeah, but think about that. If someone else were to say to you, "Hey, hey, David, look at it this way," would it have been that big light bulb moment that you had when you got it for yourself, right? Because when you see it for yourself, when you feel those feelings, when you get that perspective for yourself, it is ten times more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's the light bulb moment, really. It doesn't really matter how you get the light bulb moment. It's that the light bulb moment happens. And oftentimes that can be way more powerful yeah. when it comes from your own self. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that intuitive, uh, that hit you're showing people how to get through there. Uh, anything that thins the veil with that spiritual connection, I think it's sure. great. Meditation, uh, if it's some sort of plant medicine, if it's a hypnosis uh, technique. There are multiple ways in which we can do this. We're all veiled. Our conscious mind is veiled from our subconscious mind. Um, and we were born this way. But it's easy to peer through that veil. And there are multiple different ways to do it. And this is why I, I am so varied in what I do. I love QHHT as a technique to help people get through this veil, to get down to the depths of themselves, into their deep mind. This is one excellent way to do it. Meditation is also an excellent way, like you said, but that takes a little bit more guidance for people because most people will say, I don't know how to do that. And then even when you do know how to do it, there's still some guidance necessary in order to get to that same place because you need a guide a lot of times. That guide is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. Every mentor needs a mentor, Yeah. right? Um, and so throughout all of my work, 20 years as a naturopathic physician, retired now, 10 years as a QHHT practitioner, before all that, I was a meditator, mm. Reiki practitioner. And so with all of this experience, what I've learned is that there are multiple different ways to get in touch with what's in here. And there's lots of great ways, um, but I like to use all the ways. I like to use all the ways and I like to meet people where they're at. Yeah. But my main goal is to help people learn that they are their own best resource. They are their own healer. All healing is self-healing. And if you want to create the life that you desire, that's on you, right? And there's ways that we can do this for ourselves. And so I like to guide people to help them do just that. I use all the different tools and techniques. Yeah. I help people understand how to get through this veil. That's the biggest thing. Because we do have this within us, most of us just don't understand it. We've been told of a story so we think about it in one way. We think there needs to be this solid thing that we need to put our finger on in terms of our intuition. And so we just don't understand it. So I love, love, love helping people to understand their own intuition because that's, that's the most powerful thing we have. What are some things when clients come to you, whether it's Zoom or in person, and mm -hmm. they're working on uh, something, what are some things you see mm -hmm. that are common between yeah. the human experience? Everyone wants to know what their purpose is. Everyone wants to know, how do I fulfill the mission I came here to live? And what is that mission if I don't know it? Relationship 
issues, problems, questions, career, same thing. That's typically the bulk of it. Yeah. I mean, really, as, as humans, what else is important yeah. to us? You know, yeah. our relationships and our path. Yeah. And, and so this is, this is what I help people with. I help people see their relationships more clearly. I help them to see where they are involved in whatever is happening in their situation. I help people see more inside than outside. Because as humans, we tend to out there, out there, that technique, this technique, that tool. And that's all bullshit because you're the tool. Mm -hmm. You're the gadget. Yep. And so I coach, help, guide, teach, whatever it is you want to call it people to understand that within themselves. One of my favorite things that I learned was relationships or how the soul evolves mm -hmm. and it's a mirroring back. And so oh, it's yeah. never about the other person, it's about me and how I'm dealing with the other person. Yeah. Um, that was such a powerful thing and then I learned about soul contracts. Mm -hmm. Oh, so <laughs> we had this, this agreement that you and me were gonna be in some sort of a partnership, whether it was as friends, as lovers, uh, as siblings or whatever. Mm -hmm. Give some presence to that. Mm. This is one of um, my favorite things to talk about, really. Um, because we have contracts with everyone we know. Everyone that we have a close relationship with, we have a contract with. Mm. Sometimes these close relationships, uh, the ones, let, let's talk about the relationships uh, in terms of partnership relationships. Sometimes a partner will come into your life just to break your heart just to teach you that lesson, just to have that experience. Mm. So you can learn from that. So you can learn to love yourself because again, not out there, mm -hmm. right? So these contracts aren't always, you know, brownies and unicorns and <laughs> marshmallows, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are, hey, I'm here to smack you around a little bit. And I love you, you know, but maybe, maybe I'm gonna be the persecutor. Maybe you're gonna be the victim, yeah. you know? Maybe you're gonna be the helper, but we play all these different roles, you know? And I love to be able to look at a contract with someone who came in to hurt, you know, to cause you some hurt or pain to teach you a lesson. I love to be able to look at those contracts with a different perspective and see, wow, thank you. Thank you for showing me that yet. Yeah, it, it, it hurt, it sucked, I didn't like that very much, but I learned a whole lot from it. And I'm so incredibly grateful. Thank you for being my sole partner in that. You know, I wouldn't have asked for anyone else to hurt me in that way. Thanks. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, um, the parent-child. That's always a, a, a good one. You know, we, we try being the, the child and then we'll come back and be the parent. You know, I think that. Or maybe we've been in a relationship with someone and now we come back as their child. So I've had a few of those in, mm, in my life as well. Yeah. Yeah. We can play any, any of the different roles depending on what lesson is necessary. <clears throat> so part of that soul journey that uh, was an epiphany to me years back when I started realizing the soul is an eternal part. It never ceases. It never mm -hmm. stops. There's no death. It just it's continuation of consciousness, but it plays these different characters. So we reincarnate back into these different scenarios. Yeah. Much different narrative than, you know, one life and then it's over and then did you do good enough? It's mm -hmm. now like, what did you learn from that experience? Mm -hmm. And you know, the biggest lesson is love. Was there, did you learn to love? Did you receive? Did you give? Did you love yourself? Um, so that was such a beautiful thing. So there's no way to mess it up. You, mm -hmm. you, you can't, you can't mess it up. No matter mm -hmm. what decision you make, you made a decision and mm -hmm. you're going to learn something from it. Exactly. It's an experience. Yeah. You learned, make a different decision. It, you cannot do it wrong. That's something that comes through in my work with my clients all the time. There are no mistakes. There are no bad choices. That means there are also no good choices either. It's yeah. not good nor bad. It's yeah. nothing. It's indifferent. It's an experience. Yeah. It is. Well, we, it just something is. that is uncomfortable is bad, and something is brings us comfort is sure. good. You know, so yeah. we well, it's easy to quantify that. But yeah. the soul loves to have all the experience. I want to be yeah. abused. I want to be the yeah. abuser. I want to have the whole experience. And, and it's hard for the the human mind to rationalize that. Wait. You know, there's atrocities that are committed, absolutely. And at mm -hmm. some level, there's the soul learning from these atrocities. It doesn't mean- Learning we, the most. 
Actually. And we don't justify the, the the hurting of another person by saying, well, my soul wanted to learn no, that. No, no, no. But there is an experience to be learned and yeah. at that high level. Now, we still got our 3D character to play. And if someone's hurting someone else, well, let's see if we can mitigate that and have Absolutely. that not be perpetuated. There. Sure. But on along, along the lines of what you're saying, a perfect example would be a child, a soul, who's come into a body who is still young in this body and who has the experience of a disease like cancer. So that soul chose to come in to a body to have this experience in order to, A, learn very important lessons for itself and to help those around them as well. A handicapped body is like souls line up for a handicapped body because it's so hard that you can learn so much more. Mm. And if you ever notice that in this human life we learn from uh, hard hard experiences we yeah. learn from suffering we learn the hard way yeah. and so as a soul we pick the hardest things for ourselves because we want to learn we want to learn it so badly and so let's see how we can do this the most efficient way and and so we pick these hard scenarios yeah yeah, yeah this is a hard planet and yep. i i like to jokingly say it's so heavy here we have this thing that holds us it's called gravity. <laughs> it's so heavy yeah. here. We can't yeah. just leave anytime we want. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's and and I do think you know Dolores Cannon talks all the time. She says this is one of the hardest places to be, yeah. and fear is really the dominant thing on this planet that we have to like. Oh, I'm afraid of this and afraid of that. She's like, it doesn't exist like that in other places in the spirit realm. It's sure. it's that's one of these heavy energies here. Mm -hmm. on the, earth. the fear here is just an illusion, and it's just here so we can have these experiences because. In reality, when we look at the eternal, infinite reality, there is nothing but love. And so in order for Creator to have an experience other than that, there had to be an illusion where things seemed real to have a different experience. Because you can't learn otherwise, yeah. right? So I, I, that that's a little twisty maybe for some. Yeah. But if, when you think about our creation, our creator. There's nothing but love. There's nothing but love there. And so how does how does fear and how does abuse and how does trauma come out of that? Well, because it's an illusion of this reality. It's just an experience. Yeah. Doesn't feel like an illusion when you're going through it. So yeah. please well, yeah, the, don't get me wrong when I say that. But that's the yeah. part about the human character, the human game that we're playing is <laughs> yeah. as you cut me, I bleed. Mm -hmm. You know, you say something unkind to me and it hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, I'm hungry, I'm sleepy. I mean, I have this 3D human animal body that I'm, my soul is in, you know. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of challenge in that. And so it's hard for us to sometimes get a perspective beyond that when we're here inside this body. Extremely hard. Yeah. Well, when we're having these metaphysical discussions, it's extremely easy to say, oh, yeah, we're all love and the fear is just an illusion. And then when we focus back in on our 3D reality, yeah. It's not so easy. Yeah. It's not so easy at all, which is why I do the work that I do. Because it's so important for people to understand this connection to that all that's always there within every single cell of your being at every moment of every day. Yeah. We do get so caught up in our 3D bodies because this is our reality. And this is not real either. Yeah. The reality is that we're light, we're love, we're spirit. Okay, so to that point, there's a bunch of people that are going through a bunch of problems in the world. They're yeah. depressed, they're angry, they're sad, they don't they don't understand, they're with a partner, they don't know how they got stuck in this relationship. They can't get out, they're financially strapped, they barely make it. They're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. If I could turn the off switch off, I would, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, they're not like suicidal, they're not gonna kill sure. themselves, but they're just like, what's the point? Uh -huh. What do you say to that person? That person has just forgotten who they are. That's it. And it kind of sounds like a simple answer. It's not. Remembering who we are connects us back to that hole I was just talking about. And when you remember who you are, those feelings can't sit. They don't vibrate with that remembrance of the love that you are. So when we're having those experiences, it's a lack of this love. It's a lack of this remembrance. It's a lack of recognizing its presence. It's a lack of sitting with it, of allowing it to even enter your thought process. 
because we get so caught up in this 3D, in this world. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do blah, 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 all the things. <laughs> yep. Meanwhile, we're forgetting who we really are and where we came from, which is continuing to create all this depression, anxiety, and what have you. Yeah. You know, and, and I've Snowball. seen people have those revelations in these uh, meditative states of hypnosis where yeah. they're. I don't even know if I like the term hypnosis because it's more of just you're relaxing the body. It's and a allowing deep state of relaxation. A deep state that's of it. relaxation. Yeah, because too many times hypnosis is a loaded word. You know, uh, collect right. like a chicken, whatever. But when you get in that space and you give your active thinking mind, hey, sure, yeah, just relax. Yeah. Now, body, you can relax. What does the subconscious see? And they see these beautiful images. Wow, I'm in outer space. I'm shooting through the cosmos. I see planets. Oh, I see my home. Oh, I'm a light being. I see a guide. And I'm like, hmm. That's the true nature of who we are. Yes, that's exactly the true nature of who we are. And people see this all the time, this true nature of themselves as an energy being, as a light being. And they can feel oftentimes the density of this planet, the energetic density of the vibration that we live in here on this planet from, from that perspective. Yeah. Um, and so what's so important is just the fact that people understand that these remembrances happen when we get quiet in the mind. And I don't like the word hypnosis either because it tells people, yeah, you're going to be on a stage or I'm going to do something to you or control yeah. you or make you yeah. do something. I'm going to alter your state yeah. is what makes people I'm think. I'm going to put you to yeah. sleep and I'm going to make you think a different way. Yeah. And that is not what I do. Mm -hmm. That's not what QHHT is. Yeah. It's a super magical technique. <laughs> it, is. it is an incredibly magical technique it because is. it helps you get it for you it helps you to learn all of this stuff but it doesn't do it for you i don't knock you out it doesn't rewrite your story for you it gives you the new perspective for you to then eat yeah. but you got to eat it and you got to keep eating it yeah. because if you gain this new perspective and be like yeah that was cool but then forget about it and go back to the old daily routine of eating the donuts again well forget it then it's not going to help yeah. right so this hypnosis state that I help to guide people into is just a deep state of relaxation. You were in this deep state when you woke up this morning, right before you woke up in the morning, right before you fell asleep at night. Oftentimes we're in hypnotic states when we are driving, when we're watching TV, when we're vacuuming, taking a shower, doing the dishes. These are all different types of hypnotic states, right? So in all of these ways, I'm sure maybe you've noticed that your intuition will come to you in those moments. You'll hear, oh, inspiration, got it now. In those moments where you've shut up and stopped talk, stop the, the talk, the, the stories, the yeah. mind chatter, yeah. that's when we're not hearing our intuition. Yeah, the mind is always there to reinforce what who you are, right. what you're not doing good enough, yeah. what you could be doing better, why you're not in the place. Right. Where, blah, 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 yeah. So like just meditation, sitting out in nature, vacuuming, however it comes that you quiet your mind, this is the place where we get our answers. And so I like to use QHHT for this. And there's many ways. I like to teach meditation so people can do this for themselves. Many different ways to be able to quiet this aspect, to understand this larger, more subtle aspect that helps us to remember who we really are. Yeah. yeah. Lots of ways, lots of ways. Yeah, so that's something that you're specializing in, yeah. is getting folks to have that connection with their yes. authenticity, who they are yeah. as a spiritual being, as that soul being, mm -hmm. and really getting in touch with that guiding light, which we call the intuition. Yes. And so you've got people that come, they see you, whether it's a Zoom or in person, and, and they're looking for answers, and you're able to guide them. Is it like a, do you have a plan? Do you have a course? Yeah. How, how do you help people? What is it that... Yes. If I come to you, what do, how do I work with you? Yes. Well, it just depends. I have a variety of different ways I can work with people. I always meet people where they're at. Let's say I'm working with someone in a mentorship program, for example, a spiritual mentorship program. First, we're going to get to know each other. And I like to learn all about the person that I'm working with. And then say it's the mind-body-spirit program that I'm going to take them through. We are going to talk about meditation. We're going to focus on where your thought patterns are every day. Take a good look at that. Be really aware of what your mind is doing. And then we're going to move into changing those thought patterns that are potentially negative or not serving you. We're going to switch those into more positive perspectives, more bird's eye perspectives, because 
thought is everything. The power of thought is how we create. So I start with the mind and helping people understand how incredibly powerful their minds are and making sure that we're aware of what thoughts that we're thinking because this is what's creating our reality. Mm -hmm. So we start there. And then we go into the body and we, and we look at the body and we get an awareness of all of the different things that are going on with the body. How is the body talking to you today? Just having an awareness of it. And then we will move into, well, what does that mean? What is the body telling me? All of these different things, these very subtle things, because when you start to pay attention, you notice, oh, I didn't even notice that before. Mm. This is happening and that's happening. Yeah. All messages. The body is a messenger. It knows exactly how to tell you your lesson, um, but we don't know exactly how to understand it. Mm. So I help people to understand these messages that our bodies are giving us. And then we move into spirit. And with spirit, we've already been meditating using the mental focus, but we move deeply more into this meditation to where we're connecting with our higher self into this all-knowing aspect of ourselves within our minds. And I show people how easy it is to go on journeys for themselves, to tap into their own energy system, to see how their chakras are spinning and moving and what colors, what their colors look like, where their imbalances are. There's a lot to it, but we go through this mind, body, and spirit journey where at the end, people have an understanding of who they are, what their mission is, what their purpose is, what step to take to move forward, an understanding of all of the things that have happened to them in their life and why, and they're going to learn from it and heal from it. That's the biggest piece. We carry these old stories, so many old stories. When we get this new perspective, understand it, understand ourselves, whew, game changer, yeah. game changer, new life. On your human journey, you mm -hmm. came to this planet to do some things. Yeah. What they are, <laughs> we got the veil of forgetfulness. You can't remember anything. Um, I, I, one of the episodes I produced was with Tracy Mahan in Portland. And her client, she says, I came down here to this planet to do some stuff. And Tracy, QHHG, th level three practitioner, she says, what did you come here to do? And she goes, can't remember shit. <laughs> and I'm in the background taking notes of these episodes. I'm trying to, uh -huh. can't remember shit. Yeah. You got the veil. Yeah. And that's one of the things about this thing. We can't remember anything. Why did I come here? And then you're like, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Exactly. And we get into that space. And that's what I love about this work is you get to get the thinking mind out of the way. You get to get into that subconscious realm. There's something that draws a person into this type of work. Uh, I have this quest for who am I, why am I here, what's this whole thing about, you know, I was given a certain narrative and in my quest to unravel that and to see, well, what is truth? You know, I, I'm on this journey. How, how did you get into the space as a seeker where you want to help people find that true authenticity of who they are? Mm -hmm. What's your human journey? How did you get to this point? Sure. This is kind of a long story. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. We just ran out of time. Thank you so much for coming. I'll make it short. I'll try. Because it starts at age three. I'm, I'm one of those people who remembered coming in. What birth order are you? One. You're a firstborn. <laughs> so am I. So yeah. of course you're three and you're like, huh. <laughs> I knew at yeah. three. I knew I wanted to help people heal. Hmm. And at that early age, I was like trying to investigate body like I wanted to learn all about the body parts. I wanted to see inside the body. Mm. You know, I wanted to know what that was. Everything was inside. So you're good at the game operation then. Oh, you know what's funny about that is I took that game very seriously <laughs> when I was little. <laughs> like I was practicing for Ooh. my future job. I'm not You're the like wishbone. You. Oh, absolutely. And I was, I mean, steady hands because I'm going to be a surgeon one day. Oh, wow. And I have to do this right because I'm going to help people. At, at a very young age. I'm yeah. telling you, three years old, I knew oh, that. God, that's the best. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just, and what, I moved, what was neat is I moved on from there to want to be a teacher. And I would have, I would hold class for like the neighborhood kids and I would, the younger kids, you know, and I would teach them math or reading or whatever. And I would set up this whole like board in my garage and chairs and everything because I wanted to be a teacher. Wow. This yeah. is five. And if you add two, you get <laughs> yeah. seven. They're like yeah. blew their minds. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Totally. Mind blowing information. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, um, 
yeah, I went from, you know, doctor, teacher, got a little older, I wanted to be an astronaut, mm. you know? So I had this fascination with what's out there. Mm. Because I remember being really, really little and just looking out there thinking, there's so much more. There's so much more out there. We're so tiny. This is so big, you know? And I didn't, my mind didn't go very much further after that being little, but I just knew I wanted to explore it. Yeah. So I wanted I to be an astronaut. All the time as yeah. an adult, let alone as a child. I'm right. Like, we're so little. Dude. Yeah, yeah. These you know, tiny little so specks. Big. Like get on an airplane and look down. <laughs> exactly. You know, get an idea, exactly. right? Um, and then, um, about age nine, I had my first prophetic dream. Mm. So my grandfather, who I was really, really close to, he was in the hospital. He had gotten, uh, he was in the hospital with bone cancer to his spine. And he was supposed to be released from the hospital the next day. And that night I had a dream that he died. And then I came home from school and m my mom walked down the steps as I was walking in the door and, and told me that my grandfather died. And I woke up from that dream thinking, nah, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go see my grandpa because he's coming home today. Well, I came home from school and walked in the door, and here comes my mom walking down the stairs. And I said to her before she even said anything, I said, don't tell me I already know, because it was exactly the same scene. I had just seen it. I didn't need it to be repeated, mm. right? So that was age nine, prophetic dream. So from there, I was like, all right, now I know the future before it happens. What did I do with that as a nine-year-old? <laughs> Not much, really. Oh, wow. It just kind of stayed back there. Mm. Going through high school, I was one of those kids that always knew everyone else's intentions. Like, that one's lying. That one's not good. We're at a party drinking, you know, a kegger in the woods. A kegger. <laughs> oh, we certainly know those teenage young Yes. Because I'm like, I'm there right uh -huh. now. Um, but, you know, you're, you got a keg in the woods. You're not supposed to be there. You're 16, 17, Scandalous. 18 years old. Right, I know. Terrible. And... Um, and I always knew, right before the cops would come, any party, any wherever we were, time to go. Oh, time to go, everyone. Time to go. <laughs> time to go. I was never wrong. Did word spread around whenever Erica says you got to listen? No, because people <laughs> didn't get it. Like they were like, "Erica, stop it! You're being, oh you know." Oh my god! But so I'm long. right every time. Yeah. I'm right every time. You know, so I never got caught because <laughs> uh. <laughs> I knew how to. You know, I knew I knew what was coming. So. Um, Moving along, after my grandfather had died in this way, it also, it did something to me because he was part of the atomic bomb testings that happened in the 40s. And um, my grandfather was like Rocky, because I'm from Philadelphia. Mm. And so Rocky is like our man, you know? And my yeah. grandfather was the epitome of Rocky. I mean, he could do the rope, the, the boxer jump rope really fast like yeah. that. Really strong Italian man, mm. you know, that just like commanded a, a, a presence, just very healthy. I mean, the man ate like a uh, bran and um, orange peels for breakfast. Whoa. You know, he was the epitome of health. Huh. So for him to die in this way, I was angry. He was, he was my, my favorite, mm. right? Um, and I knew that there was a connection there with this atomic bomb testing and him, him dying because otherwise he wouldn't have had this cancer to his spine. Just as a little background, the men who were there at the atomic bomb testing, they were told to turn their backs to the blast. And so many of them got cancer to the spine or things that were in the, the back area because it was direct. Wow. My grandfather was also the one who um, developed developed this the suits, the protective suits that the men wore. They were pigskin suits that he designed. He also designed the bulletproof vest. Uh, in the 40s. Hmm. There's a version of it hmm. that he holds the patent to while he was working for the Army. Center. My grandfather was a really cool guy. So oh, you can see yeah. when he died, it did something. That was a big impact. And, it, and my grandmother tried to get some sort of compensation. The government lied to her and said that he wasn't there. Wait, the government lied? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Imagine yeah. that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we knew very well he was there. And um, so that turned into a thing of at a very young age for me was, I can't really trust these people mm. who are supposed to be, you know, in charge of everyone and, and keeping us safe, safe. And, you know. Yeah. Safeism is a new uh, religion, yeah. Yeah, so early on, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't trust our establishment, you know, and I didn't, um, and I knew, you know, I had a different connection to, to spirit. And so it just took me in a different in a different way. Mm. I wound up, you know, researching that in college and 
found out that I was right and my, my trust was very, my untrust was grounded. And, um, and then I went to naturopathic school uh, to be a doctor because I thought that that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to help people heal. And um, what do I want to say about that? Going to naturopathic school. Well, I was going to be a regular doctor. Regular. I didn't even know naturopathic doctors existed. Uh, and I luckily had a professor say, hey, you know, you can actually go study these natural things that you're interested in. So once I found that, I was really excited and, and went to naturopathic school and became a doctor and started practicing. And then I learned in practice that, okay, this isn't really it either. It, this isn't, we think that natural is better. Yes, natural is way better. The thing is, we're still band-aiding symptoms. We're just doing it naturally. Yeah. And this started to get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't handle it. I, I, I came into this life to help people heal, but I'm not doing it. I'm just giving them a band-aid that's natural. Yeah. And what I learned in 10 years of practice as a naturopathic physician was that people can do physical things, use physical tools all day long, and they will heal, they will get to a place, they will plateau, they won't completely heal, unless the mind and the emotions have been dealt with, have been understood, have been accepted. Mm. Because every lesson comes to our mind and emotion first. If we ignore it, don't understand it, push it away, whatever it may be, then it will come to the body. So when you're a physician and you're trying to help the physical body, you're doing all these things with the physical body, but the issue isn't the physical body. The issue came from here. I learned eventually I had to work with this yeah. because this rules this. Yeah. So I can do the best things naturally all day long and, and did for years. We did, I mean, the IV therapies, I think, are the best things you can do mm. naturopathically. You know, all the different nutrients and vitamins and ozone and the major autolytic chemotherapy that we did. Like, you can't do anything more powerful than mm. that. Yeah. I know that there's more tools that we have now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's just physical. You can do that all day long. You still will get to a plateau. You won't heal. And what people will also do is drive themselves nuts trying to take care of this physical vehicle. Meaning, I can only eat this, these certain foods. I'm going to be very regimented in how I eat and how I treat this, this physical ve vehicle because I have to keep it healthy. And, all these, and th again, that's not a... There's more mental disturbance happening there that's actually going to do something else <laughs> to the body. Now, when I say that, it's really important to take care of the physical body. Physical self-care is very important, but there's a balance in everything. And this is, this is what I really focus on. My name is Middlemas for a reason. Balance, right? So, yes, we should always be eating a healthy plant-based diet. But if you want to go have a cookie, please have that cookie. If you want to have a drink, have a drink. You know, yeah. just don't be doing that, the cookie and the stuff that's not so great for you all the time, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's the balance that pe people get out of. They, yeah. they extreme one way or the other. I mean, yeah. obesity is rampant in this country. And then I'm seeing it the other way where their, their diet is so strict. I'm like, how do you have any fun in life? You don't ever right. mix in a cookie for now and then, you know? And that's what happens too. There is no fun. Yeah. And when people they come in and they say, I'm, I'm depressed. I, I can't find the joy in life. Well, this contributes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely all day because we're doing these things to ourselves that are unnecessary. Yeah. So we have to look at things from a different perspective. And so I love helping people to see things in a different perspective now and to see what actually is important. And what is important is how you feel, how you think and how you feel every single day. And it's possible to wake up feeling amazing. Mm joyful, happy every single day. Depression is healed like this, honestly, yeah. with a different perspective. Yeah. I've seen it over and it. over. The, the perspective has to change. Yeah. It's all it is is perspective because your thoughts are creating everything. Thoughts are things. We create our reality with our thoughts. Yeah. Period, end of story. I don't care if like, it sounds silly, but this is how creation came into being in the first place. Yep. Like when we think about the Big Bang, right? You think about this single point that all of a sudden burst out into all these little things and then coagulated into planets, you know, suns and planets and all and, and us and everything. Well, what made that happen? What was that? 
huh, I bet it was a spark of awareness, wasn't it? Mm. Right? The light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm conscious. Conscious became aware of its consciousness. Infinite consciousness became aware of itself. I'm here. Mm. I'm here. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Like it's that simple. And then with that awareness of thought became a focus thought. And that focus thought vibrated to create light. Here we are. So if we want to understand how we do life, we look at the beginnings, look at the macrocosm. The macrocosm created all of this with a focused thought. That means us and our little microcosm selves create everything with thought. And if we look at our lives, we know we're doing it. You've created everything in your life with your thought. Well, yeah. your soul has a part of it too, so. <laughs> and some of those decisions. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh wrote Conversations with God, and he's got a piece in there. He said that the unity comes together all the individuation becomes this one thing and it vibrates mm -hmm. so dramatically that it explodes with jubilant joy and it wants to re-experience again itself in the individuation of all the different particulates and then that's the big bang and it yep. goes out <clears throat> experiences and then it comes back and eventually there's this convergence where it all comes back into the singularity of the oneness exactly. and it re perpetuates itself yep. And the yogis call that cycle, this explosion, this exhaling of all this energy into this universe that we are aware of. And then it contracts back to itself and it, the inhale and then mm -hmm. the exhale. And they call that the breath of God. And they say yeah. it's a process that's always been going. And that's yeah. when my mind cannot understand anything. Mm. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's intense. Mm -hmm. To me, knowing this, understanding this helps it make sense. Mm-hmm. What I love about this whole <laughs> idea is it's just so we're a part of something yeah. and we're not separate from it. We're a part of something. It's bigger than us individually mm -hmm. and we're a part of it. Mm -hmm. The universe is incomplete if you're not here. Right. And so many people don't understand that, whether they're marginalized from for a myriad of reasons, mm -hmm. whatever they feel they're separate from, which is the biggest that's the biggest lie is separation. You're not exactly. separate from the divine. You're part of the divine. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the thing that religion has taught us is that the divine is out there somewhere separate yes. from you. Yeah. Well, what if you and the divine are the same energy? You're just individuated having your human journey. Yeah. Oh, well, wow, that's a whole new perspective. Yes. I don't have to be so depressed and sad and angry anymore. I'm like, oh, I'm part of God and God's part of yeah. me. And I'm going to focus on who I am and do my best to... to I want to be good and light in the world. Some people right. are dark and that's not my experience. And mm -hmm. I don't want to have that. You know, I want to have happy fun, Dave, and yeah. you know, light and joy. Uh, but it takes that pressure off of me that I, I used to have to feel like I had to tell everybody uh, my perspective so I could save them from something bad, some impending doom so they don't go to hell or something. And now I realize that they can have that experience. They can live whatever that life. They're going to be just fine in the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <clears throat> people that have a, a earth death, a suicide. You know, oh, what happens? Do they go to hell? No, they they can they maybe took their life. Maybe they could have kept their human journey going, but they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. They'll in the be end, back. We're all going to be <laughs> fine. You're, we're all going to be okay, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. that just takes the pressure off. Yeah. And I, th I think that's so important. And, that, yeah. and back to that, you know, hypnosis gives you that ability to tap into that. Mm -hmm. um, so you're at this space where you're a naturopathic doctor. You're realizing you're doing symptoms. You're fixing, you're, you're putting Band-Aids on things. Mm -hmm. You're not fixing problems. So how do you get into the where you're like, well, what's the root? What's the core? How, what happens next? I must have handed out hundreds of prescriptions for meditation to my patients. Mm. That was the one thing I felt like I could do because I knew it was here. I knew it was mind and emotion. I didn't know how to help them understand it, to help them get to that place. But I knew that for me, that's how it helped me. I needed to meditate to keep myself more grounded, more centered, not in such a high stress state. You know, meditation is simply perfect for that mm -hmm. to keep you at a more even kind of keel <laughs> mm -hmm. to where you're not so high stressed you're not overreacting to things so i would always write these prescriptions take out my little pad meditation Psh, here you go when you say meditation is yeah. it something is there a time associated just with it? meditate just okay. do it i don't care how you do it do it 
Now, when I teach it, it's different. I'll teach tools and techniques, but when I did it like that, just do something. Mm -hmm. Look up a guided meditation, listen to something, go take a walk in nature, sit quietly, go to a beautiful place in your mind, whatever it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Just be quiet, just sit and be quiet, just breathe. Just sit and breathe, do nothing else but breathe. You know, that's it. But the thing is, that's not so helpful if you don't know what to do with it, right? So then I found Dolores Cannon, And when I heard her speak, I thought to myself, she did it. She got it. She figured out how to get to that place I don't know how to get to. Mm. (laughs) Right? Through hypnosis, through journeying, through tapping into what's already there. And so I was like, yes, I need to to learn this. Although when I first learned it, I grew up Catholic too. Mm. And, uh, you know, Catholic grade school, high school, college, I'm very indoctrinated and in, in, ingrained, even though I have this humongous spiritual side. I was afraid. I was afraid to go into this world. Like, who knows what you're going to find when you go into this spirit realm? Are there going to be demons? Demons, yeah. And, and That's what everybody are says. These, yeah, are there going to be the scary things there? And I misunderstood. That was just a misunderstanding. I've never seen that in 10 years of doing this work. All I see are light beings and beautiful, high vibrational experiences. Now, sometimes people go into a past life that's not, you know, good. (laughs) You know, it's not like a happy experience. Which Um, all the more validates to me that that technique works because it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Not yet. Some people are like, well, I don't want to see this or I don't want to experience myself committing suicide in another life, you know, but... uh, from the higher self perspective, to see that in a different light, wow, yeah, incredibly transformative, yeah. incredibly transformative. But you know, I I could never do that on my own to help people get there in the past. You know, so finding Dolores was thank goodness. And how did you because find she? Did, I just found her on YouTube. I was okay. led to her through other things I was studying so that's- and learning about. YouTube is a very good pathway. Yeah. You know, the Dolores Cannon and, and Foundation mm-hmm. has really done a wonderful job of curating the opportunity for people to learn. Thank you for the YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, you know, this was, when did I find her? 2010. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't much, <laughs> there wasn't as much as there is now. YouTube had just started. Yeah. So I might have watched a video or two mm-hmm. of hers and then, you know, found her website and, and started calling to find out when I could take the class mm-hmm. because... Again, I just want to help people. I want to help people heal. And I knew that this was the way to do it. And yeah, she figured it out this way to help people get inside, get those answers so that they can heal themselves. Because the body, again, knows exactly what to do to keep itself healthy and well. And the only reason why it's ever not well is because something mentally and emotionally is happening that's off and we need this message. Did you do training with her in person? Oh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But it's okay because she tells me all the time that I don't. I didn't have to. Mm-hmm. And if I, if that was necessary, then that would have happened. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. Like she, she's come. Mm. You know, you just a feel couple that times connection. in dreams, actually. Mm. No, she. I've had like visitation dreams with her, mm. and of course, I didn't believe it that it was really her. You know, I, I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> dreaming. I'm yeah. just dreaming. Like you know, yeah. everyone wants to hang out with her in their dreams, right? But, um, but no, she came in in certain like specific ways. Um, that I actually got confirmation from the people who knew her best. Mm. Like, oh, yeah, that, you know, that was her. Mm. So That's cool. Um, yeah, and, you know, just to let me know, because I, I felt, oh, I wish I would have, you know, had that little regret. And I don't have that regret anymore because she came and said, yeah, no, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary at all. Yeah. It was all divine the way it happened. But she was alive when I did start taking. I took the very first online class that was available. Mm, cool. Yeah, I was a single mom at the time, so taking the class in Arkansas wasn't an easy trip for yeah. me and my daughter. So is the minute that online class came out, I was on the waiting list. I was, like, number one on the list. Yeah, because I was waiting for it. Wow. I want to take this class so badly. Yeah, and then and then I took it, and it was came on after that. Yeah. Once I got over my fear. <laughs> and so you started practicing, uh, so you're moving <laughs> through naturopathic medicine, and you're incorporating now, mm-hmm. you know, the quantum healing hypnosis technique. And mm-hmm. it, how does that converge? Uh, how, you know, how do you integrate those? Mm-hmm. You know, I really don't. They're really two different things. Mm. Even when I got a, a QHHT client coming in that is so convinced that, oh, well, this is just because the body is 
something's wrong with the body. I have to help them work around, or their subconscious needs to help them work around that perspective that they can do this on their own. They are a miraculous machine. And this is the thing, like we have this belief, this mindset, and I don't, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And I love all my other colleagues, my naturopathic colleagues, but I don't feel like as naturopathic physicians, we're doing patients uh, any service in, in keeping them so focused on this physical thing. You know, oh, you're like this because your adrenals, oh, your liver, oh, you're, you got to detox this and that and the other. That's all bullshit. Yes. Mm. Is it happening? Sure. Yeah. But it's not the end all be all. This all happens in the mind and it's disempowering. It's extremely disempowering to think that this is in charge. It's meat. It's not. It's not in charge. Your mind is in charge and your spirit is in charge of that. So you got two trumps. It doesn't run on its own. This, this is totally running it. If we don't kind of have a little inkling that we're bigger than this, then actually trying to heal ourselves is going to be really difficult. So really, when I talk about the power of thought and belief, it's everything. So when you ask me, what do I do? I help people try to believe that they are powerful, remember that they are, and to disregard these stories that we've been told throughout our entire lives, that the church has been teaching us for centuries and centuries to take us away from our power. The number one problem I have with any religious narrative is that you're not worthy. Right. You, you can't get to the divine. You're separate and you're not worthy to be with the divine. There's something wrong with you. And we, as this system, have to make you better so you can yeah. be with the divine. That's my number one issue. Well, this is the issue. This is the overarching issue that I'm working with you because this is how people feel. Yeah. It needs to be something outside of me to fix me, yep. not something inside of me to fix me. And that's all it ever is. Yep. You know, when people have a different perspective, in their life and that light bulb moment goes off, the healing happens instantaneously. And oftentimes, we, since we forget pain, it's kind of this innate, beautiful thing that we were born with, we, we forget pain. This is why we have more than one child, blah, 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 mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We forget we've had that experience. So I could see someone three years later who I saw in a session, hey, how's that awful thing? What? Oh, right. I had that thing. Totally forgot. Mm. Totally forgot. Because it healed like that. Yeah. Because you changed your perspective. This thing of unworthiness, when we go back to when we talk about creation and all coming from the one, when we're able to work with ourselves in this way, when we're able to meditate, when we're able to make these connections, we remember or we start to remember more and more and more that there is no possibility of being unworthy. There is no possibility of separateness. We all come from the same stuff. We, every single thing here comes from the stardust that made us the starlight, the star vibration, yeah. not a single morsel, not a single atom, not a single particle, not a, not a, not a, not a on this earth doesn't come from that same source. Yeah. That means no one better than, no one less than, no one, no one more worthy, no one more powerful. They may seem it because they might remember, yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. It's just about the remembrance. And, and I think it's important that we remember as humans that since we've been telling ourselves this story for however many years we've been living, so for you and I, you know, some 30 plus years, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, but yeah, forever, however long you've been telling yourself this story, it's going to take some practice to undo this story within yourself. So we can't just have an experience and expect healing to be there when we actually have to create a new practice, a new routine, a new story. So what's the next thing for Dr. Erica? What, what are you working on? Is it, um, are, are you going to write a book? Are you yes, going to have a course? Do you yes, have sir. a way for people to grow? A, are you going to, oh, tell me, what's all the things? What are you all working the things. on? Well, here's what's great. So probably for the last, well, 13 years it's been, I've been putting together a book, books, material, so I have like two binders of materials that I want to put into books. Mm, cool. I've started to put one together. It's hard in terms of how I'm putting, how what material I want to use to put in which places. But I think I've now outlined it enough in my brain to have this all um, in place. And I'm just going to be talking about the mind-body-spirit connection first and how to heal yourself. I'm also going to have a course for that. 
uh, and a YouTube channel as well. So I bet that's going through your brain at all the times. You're like, thinking well, it, how how to integrate all of this stuff. It's yeah, yeah, because I wanna, yeah. I like to teach and I like to help guide people into their own healing. And so there's a big, there's a teaching aspect in terms of like we were talking about before. Well, how does creation work? How does the microcosm work? If we understand the microcosm, we understand the micro. Macrocosm, we understand the microcosm. Mm -hmm. And so I like to incorporate all of it. Like, what, it, what does each chakra do? What kind of energy is vibrating there? How do I recognize this within myself? What types of imbalances am I experiencing? And in what area of, what area of my system? What, what energetic place? What physical place? How is this all connected? How can I understand myself more? Yeah. You know? So I like to give people this information that, so they can learn it for themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of information. So you're get, you're getting ready to launch some some big material in the world. Then. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know the material is out there. It's not that it's not. It's just that I'm putting it together in a way that I think could help in terms of um, seeing it in a new light. Yeah. Well, you've you know? got your unique perspective, and that's what is beautiful. Don't we about, all, right? Yeah. We, we, there's as many perspectives as there are people, obviously. And we need them all. And yeah. And your vibrational perspective is going to hit somebody differently than another person. Yeah. And they might be like, oh, okay, I see how Dr. Eric is laying it out. That makes sense with me. Yes. And, and that's going to be important. And if you don't do that, that thing that's bubbling up within you, then we'll be missing something. You know, we, we need to have that little piece of the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Because, yes, this information, is, all of this information is out there and available to us at our fingertips. But, but yeah, we need about a million different perspectives because there's a million different people that need to see it that way. Yeah, so it's And not important. everybody's called to be a speaker, a teacher, an author, and a, a thought leader. Not everybody's called to that. And so mm -hmm. some people feel this pressure like, oh, I got to write a book. I got to do. No, you just live your life. The Lord yeah. talks about the potato pickers. You know, just, yep. just go out and simple. Just do do what you're supposed to do. If you're, sure. if you're a librarian, do the very best job of being a librarian or mm -hmm. whatever that, you know, dr driving your bus or taking care of the kids. What or do that to the very best of your ability. And if you've got something bubbling, there's a lot of people like, ah, oh, I've got this message. I got to tell people. I got to yeah. do something. Yeah. Then do it. You know, yeah. I had this bubbling up within me to say, this quantum healing hypnosis technique is so powerful. The Newton method is life between lives hypnotherapy. It's so powerful. I want to share this with people. Mm -hmm. I went online. I couldn't find anyone that was making a show that was kind of entertaining but yet still inspiring and educating people about this technique and i went huh oh, i gotta make this yeah and that's what we do we find something if you feel like you're the person that has to make the thing then make it yeah do the best you can right. and the universe will help you know put all the pieces in, in, in of play. course yeah because i i know people you know in the spiritual world they're just like i don't know i don't i don't I don't know if I'm supposed to write a book or whatever. I took yoga teacher training. Does that mean I have to be a yoga teacher? You know, just enjoy. That's yeah. what the Follow key is. Follow your passion. Yeah. That's what I like to tell people. Follow your passion. What is it that lights you up inside? Yeah. For me, like I told you earlier, I've always wanted to teach. I love teaching. I love it, love it, love it. I love it. I love helping people understand and know more. Like, what are you curious about? Let's find out. Let's learn. Yeah. Because it's fun. Yeah. And so... All I want to do is share what I've learned because what good is it to me if I just keep it in here and not share it? Yeah. Because I feel like I've learned a lot and I like to, I'm a pattern seer uh, and I like to make analogies. And so I like to take all different types of material and put it together into one nice little ball and be like, look, mm -hmm. this is all saying the same exact thing yeah. here. You know, so that's what where my work is um, focused. Yeah. Really, is that you'll see all the different works in my work. It's more research based. It's not really coming for me, and if it is, it's still not. Yeah. <laughs> it's still not. It's just coming through. So well, I I got to see firsthand when we filmed the episode of Journeys into the Soul. I got to see firsthand how you had a conversation with Becky, mm -hmm. and and it was a long period of time. Yeah, and you worked through a lot, and I mm -hmm. saw this wealth of knowledge being able to be utilized. And she had some epiphanies, and even as a joke, she says, "Well, maybe we don't even <laughs> need to do the session because I felt like I got a bunch of answers." You're like, yeah. "Yes, 
and we're still going to do the session. Right. Dave's here filming. So let's do <laughs> and then she had this powerful experience. She saw this. She could walk the path because the guiding inner light was within her. And she would put on a crown. And that crown was this metaphor, if you will, that yeah. was lighting the path. And it was her intuition. I was like, that is so good. And... You know, as a person that tries to connect people with their intuition, it was great. But you had nothing to do with that. That came from within Not her. A... All you were there was skillfully guiding her. Oh, really? Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Well, how about, you know, would you like to? Oh, you know, I would. And you just skillfully guided her yeah. in there. And, and then at the end, she had this powerful healing. And you're like, hey, is there some healing in the body? She's like, well, yeah, her knee hurts. You're talking to the higher self. Her knee hurts. And, you know, I don't know. You're like, really? Well, why can't we heal that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I guess we could. And so... You go, well, can you heal the knee? Well, sure, I guess. And at the end, there's this powerful healing with her knee. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I saw then how you just had this, uh, a way to skillfully navigate. And yeah. all of the journey that you've had, all the little pieces you were able to put together to really help someone yeah. come up, whether it is in hypnosis or it's in a conversation. Uh, it, I've, I've just seen your, I've seen your work in the world. I'm that little microcosm of, of who you are from my vantage point and I was like we got to have a long-form conversation people need to know who you are oh, thank you yeah well you know like what we were talking about earlier if I would have said to Becky you're so incredibly powerful inside you you have this light inside you that can guide you and take you on this path and you can walk forward with confidence you know that sounds lovely but she'd be like yeah yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, th sure those are I nice do. words. Good platitudes. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna take or I'm gonna take you on an experience and I'm gonna have you wear this crown on your head and, and the minute you put it on, it's gonna light up and you're gonna walk down this dark path and you're gonna feel so confident and she would have rolled her eyes at me. Yeah. So This is the like, dumbest thing I've ever heard. Exactly. Whatever, Eric. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so like just to shed some on what we were talking about earlier about getting your own answers and how powerful it is, is because I, I can't like, even if I were to show her or say to her exactly what her higher self showed her, it would have had, it would have not come off the same. She had to feel it, experience it for herself. So my role is an insistent questioner. I just know what questions to ask. I'm intuitive. I can see right through people. Yeah. I can see the patterns. I know the why. So when I'm listening, I'm seeing everything. I understand it all. So then I know what question to ask. And that question is specifically directed to help that person get their own answer. Yeah. And then as we're talking, I also point out to them which side of their brain they're listening to. Mm. Look, you just spoke to me through your intuition. Now you're thinking in your head, mm. get out of there. What's the first thing? So it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of this beautiful dance. But yeah. People don't need to go into a hypnosis session mm -hmm. in order to heal because they can get these answers on their own. It's just that when you do have those experiences of that incredible power, that feeling, it is a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've seen the power of it uh, and I've enjoyed watching how you worked with uh, one client. And that's the benefit of being able to create the show that I've made is to be able to sit in the room and see see the beauty and witness it firsthand if it's, it's so powerful and and that's not an experience no one's allowed in the room you know it's a right. sacred space and yeah. no one's allowed obviously we were doing it uh with permission saying mm -hmm. hey can i document this of course mm -hmm. and because it, it was a labor of love it wasn't mm -hmm. something it wasn't a gotcha show or anything like that but um I, it just it's just so beautiful uh, i'm glad that you're doing your work in the world it's so Thank important you. so necessary you're filling in your part of the puzzle so thank you for that Thank you. If there's uh, one thing you want to leave people with as we close out today, if there's one thing, if they they heard you say a bunch of stuff, what's mm -hmm. the one thing that you want people to know and take away from today's conversation? The one thing I think that is most incredibly important for people to remember is how powerful they are and that there is nothing out there. There's nothing out there. It's in here. Let's look in here. Stop looking out there. You are the gadget all day, every day. There is no gadget out there. <laughs> it's you. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And tell people how they can get a hold of you and uh, what your socials are and all that stuff. If you'd like 
to schedule with me or book with me, you just have to go to my website at drerica.love and make an appointment. I just don't have the time to answer every email and phone call, and I've stopped doing that, so I'm not, I just, I want people to be aware that it's important to me to have time for myself to take care of myself so that I can then better help others. And all of my offerings are there, any upcoming events are there, and you just click a button and pick a day, and then I show up. <laughs> and then we get the work done. We're off and running. Yeah. Well, it's been wonderful. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your light in the world. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Not Appreciate it. Friend. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining us here on Exploring the Human Journey. For more information, go to the website at exploringthehumanjourney.com. <laughs>